Okay. So something I've always wondered that seems to come up a lot is the difference between ad admiralty and common law. Ah. And I was wondering if maybe you could explain that. Hmm. Admiralty and common law. So common law is, in my understanding, uh, it's the law of the land, right? It is the common law of the people of any place where you live. So if I'm driving in the United States, I should obey the laws of the land. If I'm, you know, when in Rome, I suppose, right? When in Rome, do as the Romans do. And so in a lot of ways, that's common law. Um, Admiralty law says, I'm the captain of the boat and I maintain the continuity of the ship and my word is law and I will decide. And that's when you have a, a, a person who is supposed to be acting in the best interest of an empire that they have sworn some fealty to, I suppose. Where did they get the ship from? Uh, are they a pirate? <laughs> Do they represent, you know, the East India Trading Company? Who are they? And what is their code? That code will govern the people on their ship. And if you want to question your captain, you're going to get taken off board, right? Probably not in a very nice way. Maybe you'll be keel hauled. Maybe you'll be made to walk the plank. Maybe they'll just shoot you. Maybe they'll put you in the gallows, and let you rot. It's up to that captain. It's up to that admiral, right? So I think one of the things that we see in the, um, in the current judiciary at the lower levels in our province is that we have a single judge. Um, a single judge acts as a banker on the trade floor of a bank. They're going to make the final decision. You're in their bank. Um, a true court of justice, I believe, is a tribunal where you have three or more judges. The judges keep each other in check. They, main, they maintain the continuity of a code. They are not the final deciders. Their word is not law. They exact a pre-existing doctrine. And that doctrine can be held in question. You can challenge the jurisdiction of a doctrine. You can say there's another issue that potentially needs to be resolved before we can figure out where it falls in that jurisdiction. So that's a successive system. Um, Admiralty, yeah. Admiralty is, I'm the boss and I decide and you're on my boat. Common law says, this is how we all do it. Follow the traffic laws. You see other people fighting, don't fight. If you see everybody fighting, you might need to to protect yourself, right? So it's, it's different. You know, are we growing up in a war-torn country? Or are we growing up in a civil society where we can enjoy the pursuits of happiness and liberty? Now, what, but there's something that happens, though, that the that they sort of bring in admiralty law onto the ground. They, they bring it into the land and then they sort of uh, do a bit of a bait and hook in some way that we don't even understand that we're actually in an admiralty law rather than common law. Is that kind of the bit of the, the fraud that's happening? Potentially. And I, I don't I can't comment on exactly how deep all that goes. But I think in a in a previous one, we talked about um how there's kind of a fraternity that has usurped control of a lot of these systems. And in a way they exact admiralty law. So let's say you believe the law of the land is that we should all be fair and just and people should get along. And there's you know tenants amongst people. There's a societal norm of how things should work. And for some people it says, if you wrong me, we're gonna go toe to toe. And for other people it says, if you wrong me, I'm gonna take you to court. Um, that's up to the independent individual and it varies from area to area. That's the law of the land in a lot of ways. Although the traffic signs are all the same. Uh, Admiralty is a system that we don't always see. And even when you're in a courtroom, a judge might say, we're gonna adjourn for a minute or two, right? We're gonna take a quick break. They get up, they go into chambers. They change the form of law in the courtroom. They come back in, the clerk says, I'll rise. The judge sits, be seated. They've changed the form of the court. Now, what form of court are they using? Are they using a court of common law? Are they using an admiralty court? Is it something that reflects United Corporate Code? Is it business? You know, is it criminal? You know, what, what are they, why are they doing that? How are they doing that? And that's something that happens in chambers. It's the same sort of thing with my estate. I have deeds and writings and journals that are between myself only, right? 
um, but they're based on codes and ways. So judges can go and do that. And one judge comes back and sits back down. And they're like, I'm going to grill this person, right? Now we're, now we're talking admiralty law. Now we're talking the, you know, the ship must go on. And I'm going to do whatever I need to do to maintain the continuity of, of, of my ship. And somebody might be in front of a judge and, or, 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 uh, or an authority uh, of some variety, provincial or otherwise, and they say, uh, you know, here's how I feel this has gone wrong. Well, that authority might say, I'm not looking at those issues. I'm looking at something entirely different. Now, that's not exactly a common law system. That's an admiralty system, as far as I understand it. And uh, I don't prescribe to that myself. I don't believe that's right. If you come to me and you have a code and another person comes to me and they have a code and they have a difference that they need, I become a mediator. I become like an arbiter in that system. I'm not there to say, I'm not interested in your guys' argument. I'm here to uphold the continuity of my way, right? <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of where Admiralty comes in, in, in the si most simplistic description that I can come up with. Well, let me ask you that, because like Captain Sweep, I mean, you know, for some, for some reasons we have these, these uh, identities that we use and, and sweeping... <laughs> <laughs> sweeping the mind, sweeping corruption. And, but, but it, it seemed to me that I want to be captain of my own ship. Now, let's say I claim to be captain of my own ship. So I sort of claim uh, jurisdiction over my business system. Because then I was thinking that ships and businesses are kind of like containers. Yes. They're, con they're containers. And so your ship is like the captain's container for his business that he does commerce with. Mm -hmm. So... Is there some sort of connection there with how we structure a business? Because what I want to do is I want to structure a business. Mm -hmm. I, I want to structure a business within my trust. Yes. Then I'm doing business with a foreign entity. If I'm doing business, let's say, with the government. But if I have put them as the beneficiaries, you're saying put the offices as the beneficiaries. Like, are, are there, but I'm also, aren't I putting other people as beneficiaries? Can I put my descendants or can I put, uh, like, why am I putting the government offices there? Because they'll exist long after you're gone. Uh, so you can entrust it to someone else and you can appoint them as a trustee or a beneficiary and they can do whatever they want with it. But once your will is exacted and you give that over to a position of government, not a person in government, not a friend, not a finite entity that will cease to exist one day, just as we will. You put it over to something that has behind it a charter, a tenant, and at the heart of every institution is its own self-preservation. It will continue in perpetuity and maintain your estate. That's why. You can give it to somebody who's a baby right now, and they'll still live their life, and if they choose to do it or not, that's not up to you at that point, but a government office will exist long after we're gone so and they'll continue. But what happens? Okay. So let's say I die. They're the beneficiaries who becomes the trustee after I die. Your heir. Okay. Yeah. So you give that trust to somebody else. It's your family legacy at that point or somebody else who, who will carry it, who wants to carry that, you know, they would like to, they enjoy it. They see the purpose. Like you said, you want to create a business and you want to be the captain of your own ship. So let's just say for argument's sake, you want to be the captain of your own ship. That means it's your way or the highway. You do what I say on my ship or you walk the plank. So then you have people who are going to follow the directions. They're going to do their part. They like where the ship is going. They want to be on the ship, right? You're not going to attract people who want to take it over because they're like, we can't. We'll walk the plank. This guy's the captain and everybody else will throw us overboard if we try to, right? That kind of rings a bell of, you know, a hand of power, which is fine. And a lot of the world needs that. My estate says, what I say is, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not interested in telling you what to do at all. I want to tell myself and I want to live my life, right? I don't want to have people that are under me that are just going to do what I want. I want them to do what they want. So say I come to you and I've got a hundred people with me and they're like, 
we, we all want Cam to keep going because he seems to be at the front of this thing. And occasionally other people will come to the front and I'll look to them and say, oh, I like what you're doing. Like, I want to work with that a little bit. And I come to you on your ship and we have business, but our ways are very different. Now, I'm not, I might be on your ship. I might be a guest and I go, okay, you've got laws and your laws say, if I do this, I'm in trouble. And my laws say, if you do this, you're in trouble. So as long as we keep the peace and we keep our foreign relations in check, you uphold your end of things. I uphold my end of things. Your ship gets better for it. And my network and who I am and my productivity in life goes up for it. We all do better. And it doesn't matter if our ways are the same. I mean, in some aspects, when I, you know, my corporation moves, yeah, it, people do what I tell them or they lose their job. <laughs> but I'm not, I don't want to tell them how to live their life right? That's not exactly part of it. Um, so, so that's where we're at societally today. So let's say then, okay, I'm, I'm sort of like, okay, yeah, I, I like that. I, I really, I think everyone should have their own ship. Now we have our own ships and now we have a fleet. Yes. And now we're looking at, okay, well, what are we going to do together in a sense? Um, mm -hmm. because, but there's certain kind of like, like what I was thinking, let's say within the shared knowledge community where you'd have teams that were sort of like marketing team or infrastructure research team type stuff, functional teams at the organizational level. But then you'd also have the product teams where you would create products and you just bring people in specifically for that product, like what's yeah. happening with this chat stream right now. And so having ships and having fleets and then having, I guess, ships where you kind of go on temporarily within a certain agreement around how you're going to split the, uh, the, the, the loot once your product does well, yes. um, you want some sort of agreements that are transparent and agreements that are, um, again, sort of fair and good for everybody. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, and those agreements should be upheld. And if they're not upheld, then what you do is this person has a code and this person has a code and they have a problem and you need an arbiter. You need somebody who's impartial, who likely has the highest level of jurisdiction that you can find. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't want to go to somebody who has no jurisdiction in an issue and be like, help me solve this. Cause they'll be like, I don't even know what's happening. Yeah. Like, you know, so that's the, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's a bunch of ships and maybe we get on each other's ships at certain points and we have agreements to do so. Otherwise, what are we stowaways or are we, um, are we invaders interlopers, you know? If you need to go to sleep in the captain's quarters and there's nobody at the helm and I decide I'm the captain now, I'm probably going to walk the plank. <laughs> well, maybe you saw a good island over there that we all missed. and <laughs> well, Yeah, and that could cause disagreements and you know problems. So it's about having a clearly delineated path. That's where the will and testament comes in. That's where the foundation trust comes in. That's where on a ship of let's say a military order, which are very popular in the world because they're very clearly delineated systems that when the captain goes to bed, you know, the Lieutenant is in charge and the helmsman does his job and he's on a ship and there will be another one coming on and that maintains the continuity of that system. Right. So the will and Testament exemplifies that it shows that in a very clear way about what's what and who's who, what your position is. And, uh, and, and that's, your role on my ship and that's my role on your ship and we all work together and all of our ships go across the ocean of of change and growth and hopefully we find new worlds and new ways and uh it's a whole process of self-discovery really but it leads to great works art and culture and music and technology and all this great stuff i mean technology is the technique of knowledge everything that we've ever created has come from the minds of man or woman or whatever you want to call it and mm. uh we all do better for it as long as it's not, you know, like graphite micro scaffolding that's going to augment our physical beings or something or, you know, robots that kill people like, no, no, that's that's, you know, we don't want Terminator. So, uh, <laughs> OK, we can end on that good note. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much again, Cameron, for uh, sharing your knowledge. And in the in the final episode, the, the final scene we will dive deep into something to synthesize all this together mm. see you around <laughs>